Most of us will not find ourselves in a legitimate survival situation any time in life. But what many people fail to realize is that life is a survival situation. And now with the events that are going on that are affecting the world, many people are finding themselves in survival type situations where it's like you're in unknown territory, you don't have what you're used to having, right? Which would be your nine to five job or going to your grocery store. And it actually turns out that the same personality skills you need to survive a survival situation are the same ones that will greatly benefit you in surviving life. I'm gonna talk about the 10 main ones so that in any challenging situation, you are someone who'll be able to stay calm, collected, make good decisions, and be a benefit to yourself and those around you. And then in an upcoming video, I'm going to share with you my favorite survival story of all time, other than my own. Only those of you who are long time, diligent watchers of this channel know that I have a background in forestry. I actually didn't think it through that much. I had really wanted to be a vet and I actually had gotten accepted into you know, the preliminary veterinary program. It really wasn't the time for me. So by the time I decided to study forestry, I was kind of looking for something where I could work outdoors and not be in an office, work out somewhere like in the woods or somewhere like really remote. Anyway, I've always had a, an interest in wilderness survival, living off the land. And actually, one part of the program we did was a wilderness survival lab where we had to spend a week in the foothills of Alberta in like minus 20. I remember one part of me thinking, I'm gonna be so cold because like I'm normally cold all the time. But I remember thinking like, if we have to we basically got dropped off, told to head, you know, certain amount of paces into a specific direction. And we were allowed to bring whatever we could carry in on our backs. And we had a great time. We ate good, actually. I think I'll put a picture here so you can have a look at it. Um, you know, we brought uh, steak and vegetables. So we just had kebabs and we roasted them over the fire most of the time. And then you just have like your dry goods, like oatmeal and stuff for breakfast. So the first personality requirement for survival is someone who can make up their mind. Oftentimes, if you're hesitating, procrastinating, you have the fear of doing something. People who think, oh, I don't know how to do this, so I just won't do it. You have to be able to make up your mind and take action. Second personality requirement for survival is the ability to improvise. This requires a creative mind, a higher degree of openness, so that if you don't have the exact thing that you want, which is often the case in a survival situation, that you can put something together creatively that will fulfill that need anyway, even if it's not exactly what it is you wanted. And sometimes that actually works out better. I was walking out here, last week and I broke, well, I sprained my ankle. I was, we were worried it was broken, but it's not. Ended up in the hospital just to check it out. Um, they sent me away with a tender, uh, tensor bandage and an air cast. And now, so it's just kind of like this. This is the bandage. And I am looking up videos on YouTube, how to rehabilitate my ankle. And for one of the exercises to strengthen your ankle, you need these resistance bands. It's kind of like this plastic, long, it's kind of like this long plastic bandage, you know, it's in these bright colors and you put your ankle against it and you go like this, right? You're kind of building your strength in your ankle. And I was looking at that, I'm like, yeah, I really need that. And of course, you know, we're out here, we're hours away from a major city. We actually do get deliveries out here on days when the roads are accessible, which is not every day, but I wanted to have something right away. So it actually clicked in my mind that, hey, this bandage, I'm using for my, um, to wrap my ankle, you know, look at this. It's just like the resistance bands I saw on YouTube and I can do it single strength or double strength improvisation. The third is a person who can live with themselves. Think about it. You're out in survival. You Sometimes you're by yourself. Sometimes you might be with, I don't know, like a tour guide who got you lost or someone you don't know that well. You have to be able to maintain your internal locus of control, right? So that's keeping yourself calm, regulating your own emotions. And a big part of this too is um, boredom, right? A lot of people in the modern day society we live in 
they are used to a lot of stimulation, right? Visual stimulation. I remember when I first moved to the city after having lived in the Crow's Nest Pass in the mountains for just one year, I was so overwhelmed. Now, I am an extra sensory, so that's normal for me, but it was extremely bad. Just like driving, you know, down the street and all the different billboards, boom, 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 in your face with the flashing lights. People get really desensitized to these kind of things. And then when things are quiet and they're on their own, ooh, they gotta whip out their phone, check social media like 20 times a day. I remember, you know, I commented in my book that when I was in the hospital and I've spent a lot of time in the hospital, this happened numerous times. The nurses would come in and they would say, are you like, do you want the remote? Are you okay? Cause I would just be sitting there quietly or I'd be reading my book or I'd be looking out the window and looking at the leaves, you know, the patterns of the leaves on the pavement. And they're like, aren't you bored? Is the TV broken? So I know that there are some of you who are under law that you can't leave your house and all other manners of evil and corruption, but you can use this time to write in a journal, get to know yourself. Sometimes it's nice to just sit quietly and listen to your thoughts. The fourth personality requirement of survival is the ability to adapt to the situation. Some people can't change themselves no matter what the cost of their stubbornness. Oftentimes we have these ways that we have learned things in the past, the way that we've always done something. But in a survival situation, sometimes you may not be able to do things exactly the way you want to do them or the way that you have done them before or the way that you've been taught. You have to look at the situation and think, you know what, I'm gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to leave the old version of me behind that never strayed from the rules and take a chance here. Number five, a person who can keep cool, calm, and collected. A few videos back, I talked about how I had a situation in a grocery store during this time where someone was confronting me in an aggressive way and trying to provoke me. And I felt the anger and I felt emotions rise up in me. But then I also had this like logic that kicked in and assessed the situation and I just decided this is not something I should do right now. And I just calmed myself down. When we are in survival or fear mode, when we are panicking, we start to get tunnel vision. And when you get tunnel vision, you can't see all potential opportunities that might be there. Or maybe you're just so focused on one danger, you're not realizing that there is another danger coming from you know another direction. So it's really important to stay centered, to stay cool, calm, to take deep breaths, and to think things through. I once heard that a great way of staying in your rational mind when your irrational mind or your lizard brain is trying to take over is to just do some simple math problems in your head. That kind of switches your brain over. It kind of hijacks what's going on. And the same thing can be said for breathing. Number six, you hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. Sure, it's possible that humanity will not accept the evil that is attempting to corrupt society even further at this moment. They'll stand up, we'll fight back, we'll gain our sovereignty as humans, we'll learn to live peacefully together. I mean, it's possible. But it's also a good idea to be getting out of cities right now, to be saving money where you can, to get involved with communities, to get back and talking to your family if you have to, and even maybe stockpiling some food and medicine for a rainy day. Number seven is a person who has patience. Some people have to do everything right now, but if you have patience, you are a person who will wait for the right moment. I see that with the cats out here hunting, right? It's like if they spring when it looks like it's a sure thing, you know, it might not be the right moment to catch their prey. So they have to wait until the conditions are perfect and not take the bait to jump quickly. Patience. Number eight, a person who knows that they can take it. Most people haven't really been pushed to their absolute limits and they don't really know how much adversity and discomfort or even pain they're actually capable of dealing with. If you feel that you will be able to handle whatever comes your way 
no matter how difficult it is, you're not going to be afraid when those difficult times come. I talked about this in my video on stoicism, negative visualization. Many people in the new age community will tell you that this is extremely bad, that it will instantly manifest or you're going to bring negative things in your life by even looking at or contemplating any potential problems that you might face in the future. So for negative visualization, you just think of what you would do if the absolute worst thing happened. It can actually be kind of a fun exercise to think of creative ways to solve problems. And another Stoic practice that kind of fits in here is voluntary discomfort. Some of the Stoics used to sleep outdoors without blankets and using a rock for a pillow, just so they could kind of prepare and harden themselves for difficult times. An easy way to begin practicing with voluntary discomfort is cold showers in the morning. This is kind of forcing yourself to do something that you think is gonna be really difficult and unpleasant. And then you kind of get through it and you're like, oh, okay, I can handle difficult, unpleasant things. For me, I learned that with weightlifting. I remember just thinking, oh, this is way too difficult. I can't do it. And just being, you know, having a trainer and they're like, push, 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 push. And so you just make it through and you're like, oh my God, I thought I couldn't, but I can. I can do difficult things and it feels really good. Point nine is a person who can figure out other people and how they're going to behave. I could talk about this for a long time. Now this skill of noticing, of being able to respond to people and to know how to act in social situations, to understand social dynamics. This is a skill, like all of these skills, that will benefit you greatly in life no matter where you apply it. For me, it was suspected that I was autistic as a child. I think a lot of that just came from the abuse that I experienced. But I did go through a lot of my early childhood with very strange antisocial behaviors, things that didn't really fit in with people and just made me seem kind of strange. There was even a point where I stopped talking, like I couldn't talk. If someone came up to me and said hi, I would cry. Yes, that actually happened. Probably around high school, I started thinking, okay, I need to really kind of learn and study about humans. Uh, I really need to learn and study about other people, what their motivations are, where they come from, how they act, why they act that way, what they're really feeling. And I need to really kind of start putting myself in uncomfortable situations so I can like get over it. I did a lot of weird things. I did open mic nights, stand up comedy, beauty pageants. I applied for a female pop group. <laughs> I don't know how to sing. Studying and learning about other people is also just a really great way for other people to feel comfortable with you, to like you, want to have you around, and that is vital in a survival situation. Also, if you're with someone who kind of like steps on other people's toes, who will slack off and not realize that they're making other people angry, when you're in a survival situation with someone who doesn't have any kind of awareness of the other people around them, it can be kind of dangerous. If you're someone who has that knowledge and that foresight and that intuition with people, you can really be a great leader and a valuable asset to yourself and those around you. And the 10th final personality requirement for survival is the ability to know where your fears are coming from. This is important because you need to be aware of whether your fear is real or it's coming from something in the past. For example, I know that at nighttime when I go through the house and I turn out the lights, that if I have to get back up and go get something, I'm gonna feel kind of fearful. I have a lifelong fear of the dark. I've spent so much time in the bush and out in the woods, and to this day, I'm still scared of the woods at night. But if I just let that fear consume me and I let it be something that I think is real, then if there ever actually was a threat, 
it would just kind of get mingled in with that and I would be less aware. I find that this principle also applies to trauma and triggers. So when you are interacting with another person and they're bringing up things in you that are making you feel really intense, whether it's really negative or even like you're just feeling, oh, I just met this person and I'm madly in love with them, right? So anytime you have these really strong feelings, it's really beneficial for you to be able to kind of step back and think, okay, is this actually legitimate or is this something from my past? Is this triggering some deep wound inside of me? You know, if my boss corrects me on something from my work and I get really upset, is it because of my boss or is it because, you know, I had parents that were extremely critical of me when I was a kid, so I'm really sensitive to it. As you can see, all of the traits I've mentioned in this video will be beneficial to your life in any situation. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It is the fifth video in my 12 days of Christmas series. So I am doing uploads daily until Christmas and then on the 25th, I am going to be doing a giveaway. All you have to do is be subscribed to my channel, like each of the 12 videos until Christmas, and comment on each of the 12 videos until Christmas. You know, I have been away from my channel for a while. There used to be a time when I would upload videos and I'd be getting between, you know, 10 and 30,000 views. But now the views are low, the engagement is low, the ones of you who are out there are the ones who have been with me mostly for so long. And so I'm really excited to be able to give back by making these videos and by doing this contest. Because of that, you know, the odds of winning this contest, if you do it properly, are pretty good. I think there are only about three or four that I've noticed so far that are keeping up to enter the contest. And I don't want you to feel like you have to come up with some brilliant comment for each video. I have some of you out there who are brilliant commenters. You can just leave a comment on something you noticed about the video or a thought you had. You can leave a comment just what you did today and how you noticed you were feeling. You can use my comment section as your personal diary. I have no problem with that. Also like emojis that tell a story. Go ahead and leave some emojis that show what you did today. I love the community that we're developing um, in the comments, how people are supporting each other. I've had people connect, you know, in real life through the people they've met in my comments. Remember there's a guy once who left a comment on, on my video saying, oh, this comment section is where all the self-aware women hang out. I blocked him. <laughs> Just kidding. Not kidding. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. And by that, I mean tomorrow. Take courage and Godspeed, my friends. Bye for now. Out of this situation, only good will come. This is easily resolved for the highest good of all concerned. All is well and I am safe.